I guess it's not the rebuttal period. <laughs> but um, <laughs> that's, the, that's the disadvantage of going first, right? Uh, no, if I if I were to follow the money. Um, deep throat, I would uh, actually look at the GPL as first and foremost the single best license out there for uh, on a range of factors. I'm going to come back to that one in particular, but if you look at where the vast majority of the money is being made in open source today, not money being with software that was developed with an open source tool but money that people are actually out commercializing. We have somebody from Red Hat here today. They're getting close to a billion dollars in annual revenue just based on selling services around GPL software. So I think the money speaks highest to GPL. But coming back to that, because the core message of open source, the, the fundamental ethos of open source is sharing. It's not how much money I can make from, from somebody else's ignorance of a license. It's not anything like that. It's this idea of sharing. Um, and that's where the power of it comes from as well, which I think is one of the primary reasons that if you look out there and you say, follow the money, follow the market share, follow whatever you'd like, if you look out there and do an analysis of the licenses that are in use, and Black Duck Software has done this and other organizations have done this, over 70% of the open source projects out there use the GPL, period. It's the single most dominant license out there. And I think for a good reason. And the primary reason, it comes back to the trust within a development community. And frankly, if you're working with an enterprise uh, software vendor like Red Hat, like Novell, like um, Alfresco, whatever the company may be, you want to be able to trust the code beyond the vendor. So even if the vendor goes away, even if you don't happen to like the vendor, um, at the end of the day, it's got to be about the code. And that code has to be a distinct entity or community and the GPL enables that. One of the things that I like most about the GPL is that I think it actually is easy for non-lawyers to understand. I actually think lawyers understand it pretty well too, but here's what the GPL effectively says. If you use it and make changes to it, contribute back, share. Lawyers hear that and they say, but what do you mean share? We don't really like to think of our clients having to share things. No, it's very simple what the GPL means. If you give value, give value back. Lawyers don't like that. They understand it. They don't like it. Developers understand it. Granted, there may be, you know, there are issues around the edges as to what, you know, what do I, is this a dynamic linking? Do I have to, do I have to contribute back derivative work in this instance? But if you look at the market share numbers, 70% plus, most developers at least think they have a pretty good idea of what it means. And there hasn't been any substantive litigation around the GPL yet, or frankly, for that matter, any, any open source licensing, uh, which I think is at the end, ultimately, people really do understand what it means. Um, they don't always like it, but they do understand it. Three basic freedoms in any open source license, whether it's the EPL, BSD, slash Apache, or, or GPL. Freedom to view the source code, freedom to modify that source code, and freedom to distrib distribute the, the source code. Of those three freedoms, I think each do the first two remarkably well. I think it's on the third, this redistribution that the GPL really shines, and it's where the implicit trust comes in the GPL license. Um, part of the problem with some licensing is uh, that you have no control, unless it's under a GPL-like license or under the GPL specifically, once you license that code, anybody can take it, um, hijack the code, put it into a proprietary product. And for a lot of developers, they don't want that. They want to be able to know that the code that I've written will always remain free. I didn't write it so that it could end up in IBM's um, you know, web sphere or whatever. I wrote it so that it could be an open source project that anybody has the opportunity to view and modify and create their own derivative works of forever and ever. That's the fundamental freedom of the GPL. 
Um, and if you look at, it's not just, uh, for, incidentally, just as an aside, for end users, those who are, if, for those who are interested in using open source, but not necessarily aren't in the business of redistributing software, then at the end of the, at the end of the day, all of these licenses are functionally equivalent. We're all basically BSD um, when it comes to people like an enterprise like CBC, if they wanted to use an open source uh, software package and they isn't planning on redistributing it as a, as a vendor or in some way, then it doesn't matter because anybody has the ability to view and modify source code. It's only at that point of redistribution that the open source license kicks in. So for those who are worried about it saying, I don't really want to have to share my source code, Unless you're, unless you're MySQL or Oracle or, or somebody, you generally don't have to think about it. It's not that big of a deal. But for those that are in that business, if you look at the most successful companies, vendors, um, open source vendors on the planet, virtually every single one of them is using the GPL. Even Spring Source, which was in fact an Apache license, the Spring Framework is an Apache license product, is increasingly releasing code under the GPL. And I asked Rod Johnson why. He said, well, because for some projects, for some of our code, it makes the most sense. And a lot of it has to do with what you're trying to achieve. If you're trying to achieve a vibrant developer community that is founded on this trust-based network of giving back, it's hard to be the GPL, and again, the 70% plus numbers testify to that. And again, why? Because you know your code can't be hijacked. Um, now, I'm from the United States, and I know it's not popular anymore to talk about capitalism or to talk about um, making money. Uh, we all want to share now, suddenly. Um, I'm sure after a few years we'll go back to being greedy slobs, but uh, for now we're all in the sharing business. Um, I actually think that the, G the GPL is a capitalist dream. It is the single best business tool in open source, bar none. And he asked why? Because it benefits your users. Users get to use the code. They can view. They can they can modify the source code to their needs. And in, in my company, we have a range of customers that do exactly that. And because they're using, without they're not in the distribution of software business, they don't run up against any of the requirements of redistributing or giving back their their derivative works. But the people that aren't benefited from our move in the GPL, and my company uses the GPL is our competitors. So it's this great way of releasing source code, giving it out to the world, frankly undermining our competitors and bludgeoning them over the head in a very nice um, sharing sort of way, um, while still benefiting our customers. Helping customers, hurting competitors, the American way. Um, so ultimately, again, whether you look at uh, whether you look at the dollars being made in open source, whether you look at the number of projects, Google Code, which now houses uh, over 250,000 projects, 50% of those are GPL version 3, which is an amazing number given how recent uh, GPL version 3 is. Whatever metric you use to measure open source success, GPL is the dominant license. And I think, again, it's, it's there for a very good reason. GPL fundamentally creates trust within development communities because you always know that the person on the other side of that code transaction, the person who's downloading and using your software is going to be governed by the same terms under which you license that software to them.